when you're in a crisis, how do you react? When things are spiraling out of control, what is your response? If a tragedy befalls you, are you still able to trust God despite the circumstances around you? Today, I've entitled my message, Our Willing God at Work for You. The people of Jesus' time really didn't understand it. But of course, they really had no means to. How could they possibly know that it was contagious only after long periods of very close contact? The only thing they knew about it was what it looked like and what it did to a person in the advanced stages. That they knew very well. They understood how it maimed and disfigured, and that was enough for fear to take over. I'm talking about the disease of leprosy. In a world and a time in which the disease has all but been eradicated, except in a few isolated places, we cannot appreciate the fear that accompanied this word in the ancient world of Jesus. It brought about the same responses as the word plague did in the 1200s, or smallpox in the 1700s, or polio in the 1900s, or HIV AIDS in the late 1900s, and now coronavirus in 2020. It frightened them. They felt largely helpless against it, as that is what they were. So what happens when fear takes over? People do not act people react. And reactions to leprosy were both swift and cruel. In times not far removed from our own, people would be put to death by their own family. It seems incredible to us today. But on the edge of every large city in the ancient world, huge pits were dug, and in those pits lived the lepers of the community. And if by some remote possibility they did escape this hovel and venture out into the streets, they would be quickly greeted by shouts of leper accompanied by stones to make them keep their distance. In Jesus' day, a leper by law could not get in with 50 meters of a clean person. So this was the heart of the matter. Not only did these wretched people have to endure the trials of an incurable affliction, they were also isolated from society and kept from the community of faith. The horror of the disease, a lifestyle of loneliness, isolation and hopelessness. Where could they find hope? The only friend a leper had was God himself. In this life, they were doomed. This then is the background of the leper that we meet this morning. We find our scripture reading today from Mark's Gospel chapter 1 and verses 40 to 45. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, he went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. So what can we learn from this man's tragic story? Friend, the first thing that we can learn of this man's situation, we learn about the loneliness of leprosy. This leper's personal life remains a mystery to us. We don't know his name. His years of suffering and pain are not mentioned. What we do know is that the leper comes to Jesus alone. There is no one else mentioned in this text, just Christ and the leper. 
Perhaps the shortness of this gospel story obscures its deeper meaning. At first glance, we might think that what Mark is telling us is that God has the power to heal, and that is certainly true. But I believe there is something more to this story. Something connected with the leper's life long before he was healed. Something which for years the leper could not see, and something which perhaps he'd never even dreamed of in his wildest imagination. That is, in all his loneliness and despair, while his flesh was rotting away, long before his healing took place, God had not forgotten him. Indeed, God was at work in his life, leading him towards that destiny that was to be his own. It seems incredible that we can say that. Because as we look back over the leper's life this morning, it's hard for our minds to fathom how God could be at work in that situation. You see, we understand this as the prevenient grace of God. We, of course, can accept the final victory. We can accept the fact that God has the power to heal. But the real question is, can we accept the fact that quietly and mysteriously, God was there all along, leading, sustaining, guiding this poor man to an appointment with history. God with him and by him, even when this poor man thought that his life was over with. He perhaps had even given up praying. It seems to me that if Mark is telling us anything this morning, it is that God is not just with us in the final victory of life. God is at work all the way through, there by His side, even when God may have been the furthest thought from His mind. I suspect that we are very much like the leper. When we're in a crisis, when we're hurting, it's very hard for us to see God at work in our life. Perhaps at times in our life when we genuinely feel we shall never smile again. Perhaps at times in our life when we think that our present situation will be our lot in life till the end. Perhaps there are times in life when we travel through it all alone. But just like the leper, while he was at his lowest possible point, God is at work in our lives too. Jesus once was with Nicodemus on the top of the Mount of Olives and he told him, Do you hear the wind blowing? You don't know where it comes from and you don't know where it is going, Nicodemus. The Spirit of God is like that. Sometimes it's like a gentle breeze and other times a mighty hurricane. But it's always there. Friend, the second thing we can learn from this man's tragic story is that our suffering moves God's hand and moves his heart. Filled with compassion are the words that Mark uses. God does not sit idly by when we are in pain. Jesus reached out and touched the man saying, I am willing, be clean. Let me tell you a story of a New York City policeman investigating a case. Dialing the phone on the day of the investigation, he somehow knew before he had even finished that he'd made a mistake. The phone rang once, twice, and then someone picked it up. You've got the wrong number, a husky voice snapped before the line went dead. Mystified, the policeman hit redial. I said you got the wrong number, came the voice, and once more the phone clicked down. How could he possibly know I had the wrong number, the policeman asked himself. Now a cop is trained to be curious and concerned. And so he dialed a third time. Hey, come on, the voice said. Is this you again? Yeah, it's me. I was wondering how you knew I had the wrong number before I even said anything. You figure it out. And the phone slammed down. He sat there for a while the receiver hanging loosely in his fingers, and he called the man back. Did you figure it out yet? the man asked. The only thing I can think of is that nobody ever calls you. You got it! And the phone went dead for the fourth time. Chuckling to himself, 
The officer dialed the man back. What do you want now? asked the man. I thought I'd call just to say hello. Hello? Why? Well, if nobody ever called you, I thought maybe I should. There may be nobody else in this world that is moved with compassion enough to reach out to you. It happens. People fall between the cracks and get left behind, even in church. There are lepers all around us who live isolated lives. And sometimes the only one we must rely on is God himself. God who dials our number and says, I thought I'd call just to say hello. God who brings joy to the sorrowful, peace to the troubled, and healing to the lepers. God who embraces the lonely in the shadow of his wings, who fills the empty and who guides those who are without hope. So first we can learn of the loneliness of leprosy. The second thing we can learn from this man's story is that our suffering moves God. Filled with compassion, our Lord reached out and touched the leper. Another thing we can learn from this man's story is that our Lord is willing to heal. Even in the depths of physical misery and death, there is spiritual healing. Our tragedies can be his triumphs. The leper came to be healed. If you are willing, you can make me clean, which really isn't a question, is it? Rather, it's a statement of faith. If you are willing, he said. He did not say, if you are able. It's recognition that Jesus has the ability, the power of God to heal, and it changed his life. Jesus was not only able to heal and restore the leper, he was willing to. Just as the Lord is willing to restore and heal your situation right now. Whatever it is that you are facing, Jesus is willing to heal, restore, renew. Call it whatever you want to. Jesus is willing to do it if you would just ask Him. Yes, it will take some faith to trust Him to do it. But that's all He needs from you, just a little faith the size of a mustard seed, and trust in Him and allow Him to do the rest. So my friend, I ask you, will you be brave like that leper and ask Jesus to restore and heal your situation? If so, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I have been carrying this burden by myself for such a long time. And only today have I realized how lonely I've been. I realize too that you don't want me to carry this problem anymore and that you want to help me. And so Lord Jesus, right now I'm placing my faith and trust in you to sort things out for me. You know my situation Lord and I ask you now to restore and bring your healing to it. Bring to my mind right now the things that I can say or do on my side to effect that change. And show me, Lord Jesus, in the days to come, the ways you have sorted out this burden for me. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Amen.